I should put, I'm gonna, sorry, wait, I'm gonna move this so that you can see him. Because we're interviewing him. Yeah. Right? Sounds good. Okay, so that camera's like on you guys. All okay. Right. Ready? It's about, it's about generating ideas, funding, and becoming an entrepreneur. That's good. With networking events, me. guest speakers, and workshops, build your entrepreneurial mind with us. For upcoming events, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at MDX Entrepreneurs. Why? I was not expecting that. Hello, everyone. You're listening to the MDX Entrepreneur Show on MDX FM. We're live with Ashraf Khalifa and my co host, Adila. Hello, everyone. Hope everyone's doing good. And uh, for today, we have a very, very special surprise for you guys. We have our uh, first guest who we're going to interview. Uh, would you <laughs> like us to give an introduction? I think that's probably best. What do you think, Adila? Yeah, I think you can introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Ahmed Jogazi, and I study computer science, second year. Nice, that's what's up. So Ahmed, he's actually part of the student media team. So at Middlesex, we have um, three branches of the student media team. We've got the, the radio show that we are currently on, which is MDX FM. And then we also have a print newspaper, which is called uh, The Echo. And then we also have a TV, which um, is called the MDX TV, I believe. Well, MDX Student Media TV. That's it, MDX so, yeah. Student Media TV. So um, Ahmed is the head of marketing for all three channels on the student media team so would you like to tell us a little bit about what we do and also what the student media is okay so first of all I'll talk about my my role okay so what I do is that I help all, all sorry I lost my words <laughs> it's okay worry, worry. take uh, your time uh, so okay again so in my role what I do is that I help I help all the all, the, all three strand leaders but or the FM, the TV, and the Echo in promoting their content, and well, not just their content, but also their strands in general as well, that just to make them more stand out, uh, especially especially their content when, when, whenever they need, want me to help them with promoting. So yeah, that's pretty much what I do in in marketing, and I'm not just not just that, I'm also responsible for helping them with the brandings and especially in, in entire student media as a whole, especially when it comes to, who, okay, say for example, student media was formerly no, known as PAL. Yeah, PAL, yeah, PAL, PAL TV, but, <laughs> but then we decided to change it to MDX FM because, sorry, not FM, MDX student media because, because to, every, to more everyone, balance. it's more balanced and stand out. Yeah, so yeah, um, and it does work well when it comes to popularity. Okay, listen, on that note, um, I just wanted to say, um, so I'm on live on Instagram, um, but the thing is, I don't think they can hear my two guest stars. Um, so yeah, let me just, so I've got my two guest stars out here <laughs> and it's a little bit mad because I, I'm pretty sure. They How many people watching? Anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure they can't really hear anyone. Like, I don't know if like, they can't hear what we're hearing on the radio. You know what I mean? So I think you guys might have to be a little bit louder. Um, also, we need to try to, yeah. Try to right, if you do it like that for now, um, yeah. So basically, oh. <laughs> you're gonna be in charge of like rotating the angle at different times. Um, but I think they can hear us in the room, but it's not as loud as uh, yeah, as hear. the microphone. But basically, yeah. I'm just letting them know what's happening, so I'm not just talking to like myself. Just, okay. Like, really so should we explain it. it to them? Um, yeah. So basically, Actually, we're awesome first. I. Uh, let me know. If, let us know if you can hear us. If you can hear us, uh, send like a, a send like, a star or a like, a like yeah. Or a, or a 
a kiss face. That's the, that's the or just one. say yes. Say yes. <laughs> yeah, just say yes. Just no, a simple. Just a simple. Okay, let just us know. A simple. We can hear you. We hear you. Yeah. All right, okay. sweet. So basically, oh, we are on our first live video on Sudanpreneur, which um, is on the MDX Entrepreneurship Show, which is on MDX FM. So I'm the uh, the main uh, host and also the um, the treasurer of the MDX Entrepreneurship Society. Um, and also the MDX of the Enactus um, Entrepreneurship, which is more social entrepreneurship society. And um, I've got my beautiful cousin. Um, she's my co-host. And basically today, yeah. So Adila is not only a uh, you know a student here in London, but she's also a talented artist. So from time to time, she's gonna uh, bless us with some live performances, hopefully. Hopefully, yes. Maybe next week next can week. bring my guitar. I don't know if you guys uh, convince her. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she might. I don't know. I think we have to encourage her. Um, yeah, encouragement does help. Definitely. Yeah. So basically, we are also um, live on the radio here in the UK. So obviously, we need to um, you know, keep them involved. But basically, um, so what I've decided to do uh, with my radio show, um, I've decided to... Um, promote Sudan, Sudanpreneur, and also what I'm going to focus on um, is a different Sudanpreneur personality. Um, so from my website, we're going to start from the beginning um, and just go through, and each show is going to be dedicated to to that particular person. Um, also, we're also recording this as well. I've got like some webcam, so like I've got multiple uh, like places I need to like I need to make sure my mic is set up like in terms of my distance to the mic as well as to the Instagram but also to the to the two cameras recording so um yeah so today we actually have a special surprise um we have a very very great lady to talk about today so we're gonna focus on the late great Fatma Ahmed Ibrahim uh, who passed away not too long ago um so I'm just going to read you guys a bit of a bio, a bit of um, information about her. And then we're going to incorporate you and your role and her and, and um, into sort of uh, into our interview. Um, if that's all right with you, Mr. Ahmed. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Okay. Um, all right. So Fatima Ahmed Ibrahim, um, she was born in 1933. She's a Sudanese writer, a Sudanese uh, women's rights activist, and a socialist leader. So she joined Umdurman Girls Secondary School, and her activities towards women's rights started from that time. So Ms. Mrs. Ibrahim published a, a wall newspaper called El Raida, which means Vanguard or the Pioneering Girls. And this focused on women's rights. She wrote in newspapers at that time, but she used a code name. Um, she also conducted the first women's strike in Sudan when her school administration decided to omit the science lessons and replace it with family science lessons. The strike was successful. In 1947, she founded the Intellectual Women's Association. And in 1952, she worked with other women and founded Al-Ittihad al-Nisa'i al-Sudani which means in English, the Sudanese Women's Union. Um, the sphere of action of the Women's Union opened membership to all women in Sudan, and the Women's Union opened branches in different provinces in the country. At the Women's Union, she also worked to establish equality with men in wages and technical training, and helped to remove illiteracy among women. Because of uh, the Women's Union objectives, there occurred a lot of clashes with the political rights, such as Jabhat al Mithaq al-Islami, the Islamic Pledge Front. In 1955, Ms. Ibrahim became a chief editor of Asot al-Mar'a magazine, which means the Women's Voice magazine, published by the Women's Union. The magazine later played an essential role in the overthrow of the Ibrahim Abdul regime. In 1945, uh, Ibrahim joined the Sudanese Communist Party and became a member of the Cultural Committee of the Sudanese Com uh, Communist Party. Sudanese Communist Party also at the time was the first Sudanese party which allowed women um, and women had a formation inside the party since 1947. Um, in 1956-57 Ms. Ibrahim became the president of the Women's Union 
and in 1965, Ibrahim was elected to enter parliament and became the first deputy Sudanese woman. During the Mehdi's regime, Ibrahim was arrested many times, and in 1990, Ibrahim left Sudan after Omar al-Bashir's military coup and joined the opposition in exile as the president banned the women's union. In 1991, Ibrahim was elected the president of the Women's International Democratic Federation. She returned to Sudan in 2005 after reconciliation between the government and the opposition, and currently she's been appointed as a deputy in the parliament representing the Sudanese Communist Party. In 1993, she received a UN award for outstanding achievements in the field of human rights. In 2006, she was awarded the Ibn Rushd Prize from Ibn Rushd Foundation. Oh, sorry, Ibn Rushd Fund for Freedom of Thought. And also, I just wanted to give you guys um, a very important piece of information. So this entire article was written by Ali Diab on her awesome blog. So I just want to give her a shout out. Um, and Ali Diab is an, a journalist and she's got a very um, popular blog. And she set up uh, an organization called the 500 Word Magazine. So she encourages people to send articles of less um, of no less than 500 words and um, yeah so thank you Ola. Um, yeah so as you guys can see she's a very influential woman in Sudanese history who has shaped a lot of the 100 percent very thing. very powerful um, yes. and I'd say a big role model big inspiration to myself but also I guess to a lot of Sudanese women out there. I can speak Definitely. from experience because I know um, my sister is a big, big fan of her, mm. and my sister is, uh, I, I can safely say, uh, you know, I know, I'd say this to her if she was here, and that she'd probably wear this proudly, but um, she's one of the biggest feminists you're ever going to meet, mm -hmm. but yeah, <laughs> so um, yeah, amazing, um, do you have uh, any women, like, politicians that sort of are similar to Fatma Ibrahim? Uh, back where you're from, Ahmed. So I'm assuming you're from Iran, yeah? Well, I'm not really born there, I was, but my family's from there. Okay, and then in terms of like, because see, for us, obviously, um, when our parents talk about the revolution or like getting rid of uh, like the British colony and, you know, taking power, like they always talk about Fatma Ibrahim. Like she was the first woman elected into parliament in Africa. Um, and that's like, like an amazing, uh, you know, like quite like inconceivable now, you know what I mean? Um, but in terms of in Iran, like, is there a lot of women in politics or no? Like in terms of historic, like I'm not talking about now. Well, to be honest with you, I don't really know about mm -hmm. that because I'm not, I don't get myself involved in politics that much. Okay. So, yeah. Um, in terms of, um, in terms of her ideology, obviously she was a communist, uh, left thinker. So, you know. And yeah, like I'm actually lucky to have met her in my life, but um, very, very late in her life. So um, she wasn't, but it was, it was uh, like a big honor, I think. And um, how did that go? How was the experience? Well, my, it was emotional, was you know, she was, uh, she kept on talking about like, uh, my dad kept on asking her about Al-Mahjoub and she kept on talking about him because I know Muhammad Ahmed Al-Mahjoub, he was, uh, he was the head of the Ummah party at the time. Mm. So like, she was talking about a lot of the clashes that they used to have and the arguments they used to have so uh, yeah that was quite inspirational quite moving um, I can imagine yeah um, okay <laughs> <laughs> so um, in terms of you our beautiful uh, mysterious mysterious <laughs> guest <laughs> out there um, let's talk about more about what course you're studying and what made you decide to do that particular course okay so i studied computer science like so what is that it's, it's mainly programming let's say for example learning how to use java and c stuff like that in in so many different fields like for example robotics artificial intelligence web development and there's many sorts and oh yeah software engineering is also included and yeah and did you always uh, enjoy like programming or to be honest with you not really <laughs> <laughs> it's tough work yeah really tough work it is it is uh, yeah. is there a, an aspect of it that you enjoy more well what i can say is that uh, how can i say this all right well so far web development is 
is what I enjoy the most. Mm -hmm. The second second one is computer networks. Is that we? So that we? How can I say this? I right. we were doing this like practical activities in computer networks, such as like connect. Okay, so we're using the software which is called Packet Tracer. Um, with that, you can actually like like simulate with the seem like technologies like PCs, switches, routers, uh, and and so many other things, cables as well, and you also get to like enter down IP addresses and such on them as well. Like and it, it's like okay, like you're manually turning on the computer. You can literally do that on the software as well. Okay, that's interesting. Um, on that um, note, I'm going to put a song for us, and then that will also give me a chance to check out on the Instagram and see if anyone wrote anything and replied to them. And also, I think uh, we're meant to play at least one song. Okay. From the um, the uh, yeah. So basically, there's something called the Student uh, Radio Association, and they send out a bunch of songs every month, and we're meant to play those songs. So um, they're quite new, but at the same time, they're also um, like not like my personal selection. So don't blame me for being song choice. Okay, so um, let us try to find uh, a nice song. Here. Um, do you find a, s a nice song there, Antiva, or um. the particular one that? Um, takes your fancy the there isn't a particular one that stands out but okay. i think we um, can just choose um okay i recognize yeah, i recognize katy perry so i might play some <laughs> yeah, yeah. all right for sure everyone loves katy perry <laughs>
and we're back i hope you guys didn't miss us too much um you're back on the mdx entrepreneurship show uh give me one minute i need to uh play something very important for you our awesome jingle one minute i wait to start your business after uni when the best time is now join the entrepreneur society for the opportunity to learn from industry experts about generating ideas funding and becoming an entrepreneur with networking events guest speakers and workshops build your entrepreneurial mind with us for upcoming events follow us on facebook and instagram at mdx entrepreneurs so um, that's the mdx entrepreneurs uh jingle so make sure you follow us we're on the gram on instagram and we're also on facebook and we have uh a lot of beautiful workshops and events that we do uh we had actually an event um on tuesday actually no, on yeah it was on was it on tuesday might have been on monday actually yeah because today is wednesday i think it was on monday um so it was about investment in like uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency um and then last month we had um even more special and awesome guest speakers um so basically there's this um company that is a new startup so um I don't know um, if you guys could guess, um, you know, the company, you know, like, for example, all the robes that you get when you graduate. Mm. Guess how many businesses make those and like how many companies are in that market? I assume like hundreds. Would you be so shocked just one if I said one? Would you be shocked if I said there's just one company? Just yeah. one. Yeah, there's one company that makes all the graduation gowns in the UK. Wow. And wow. Yeah, imagine. So basically, there is... Must um, be billionaires already. Yeah, yeah so they, they're they like... Uh, I think they were set up in like 1550-something, so like hundreds of years. So it's like a very wow. ancient, oh, historic yeah. company. Um, and basically, with the dressing gown comp- like market, like people rent a gown for just one-off occasion. Mm. You see what I mean? So it's not like like you can make a lot of different products or like you know what i mean yeah, yeah. so um it's pretty standard it's, yeah and then also it's just like a one-off experience as well that's another challenge mm. so they don't buy the gowns it's mostly renting it's mostly renting okay and then um so there's this company it's called churchill gowns mm. so they created an organization that makes gowns and competes with the one other company but they also make it from like a sustainable like they make it from plastic bottle waste as well oh and then the other thing as well, they're like a lot cheaper as well. I think it's like yeah, uh, true, yeah. 20 pounds off. Um, mm. And then also, they also offer, um, I, th- I, th- I think it's 20. Like, I don't want to be wrong, but it's, it's definitely a lot more cheaper. Mm. Um, and then they also offer people the chance to buy the gown as well. But obviously, I think it's like 150 pounds cheaper if, if you buy the gown from them. And then the other thing as well, um, they actually send you the robe in the mail. So you receive it at home. You can wear it from your house you know what i mean you can get dressed in it whereas you don't have you know like the cues to get the gowns during graduation like i'm talking about from my own personal experience it's a nightmare oh. um and yeah, also, everyday graduate <laughs> exactly and then the other thing uh, as well like um the fact that you can um also like have it with you and then send it back to them so you can get as many pictures in different locations you know so obviously there's a lot of benefits um surrounding this company but the other the other benefit for us um was the fact they've been on Dragon's Den and they actually like received a I think it was 70,000 pound investment into the company oh wow yeah so they came down to talk to us um, last month in January um, the the owners um, the two co-founders and you know they gave us a really inspirational really interesting that's talk. interesting um, okay so I have to admit um, so as of yesterday um, I so basically when they came to give us their talk um they said that they they work with universities and they they have like brand ambassadors in the university that sort of help build the company and stuff so i actually got a job with them as a brand ambassador so um all the students here at middlesex make sure you grad you graduate like with their gowns because you're definitely saving a lot of money but at the same time yeah like so what what's the brand called again it's called churchill gowns churchill gowns so you so guys know Whenever graduation is coming up, instead of, you know, looking last minute for your gowns, just check out Churchill gowns. That's those it. are the ones. And, and um, there's, they're more sustainable, right? They're definitely more sustainable. So each gown that you get, they're 
reducing the world's ocean plastic by 23 bottles. Wow. Yeah, imagine. So uh, how, do you know how they do that? Like. So they take the they take the plastic mm. and they use it when they're making the thread. So like they use it okay. into like making the actual gown. Interesting. Yeah. And but basically, the other thing that's very important mm. is like your gown will look identical to a middle sex gown from the other company. So when you're sending a graduation, there's no difference. You look identical. Mm. Just one is cheaper and the other one is very expensive. Mm. That reminds me of uh, Nike. They worked on these shoes with recycled pl uh, plastic as well. Yeah. So they probably use similar techniques. 100%. Trust me, they make a lot out of recycled materials. Yeah. They make a lot. Of as we should, you know, this is this is going to be more present in the future, I think. I think so, the way that we're going yeah. with this global warming. Mm. Well, we kind of have to. Only if <laughs> everyone stops choice. throwing plastic at oceans and elsewhere. But there's also a couple of. Um, and and a couple of those. Recycle. There's also a couple of, um, you know those um like new inventions i've been reading about on facebook and like on um, new scientists and stuff that have like these different machines that that are going out into the ocean and um like collecting oh yeah mm. yeah i've but seen i've seen some of those yeah i don't know how i don't know like how sustainable it is to use the machine no no no. for us like i'm aware there's only to, one yeah. or two of those machines mm. Mm. i don't know I think we have they to should tackle make the, the issue at the root. But roots, that you know? is actually a very good opportunity for us to talk about another event that I'm uh, organizing, which is called Design by Nature, which is actually um, done in conjuncture with the World Fair Trade Day. So we actually have a big surprise for you. Um, it's not actually on the poster, but let me actually show you guys the poster. The poster is pretty dope. So... Um, we actually have the vice chancellor of the university himself coming down to our event to uh, grace us with his presence. Um, and we've got a cash prize for the winning person. So basically the way that design by nature works is um, we want to create, we want people to create new initiatives, um, design and creative ideas to help make a sustainable living. So um, we've got three categories um one of them is sustainable fashion the other one is air pollution and then the final one uh to be honest i'm not gonna lie i'm not sure at this moment right now but i um it definitely has something to do with sustainability and there's a prize of 100 pounds for each category um and this is happening on the 27th of february from 10 till 5 in the grove atrium but uh, the deadlines for the entries are on the 24th of this month. So if you guys are interested, you should have definitely... Uh, four or five more days? Yeah. Don't miss the opportunity. No, it's a really good opportunity to win £100, and we all know how that student life goes. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is so true. So um, Enactus Middlesex, um, I'm also the treasurer of Enactus Middlesex. Uh, we are a organization that works with a global organization called Enactus. So Enactus has partnerships with universities and they create, um, so basically they only work with university students. So every university creates an Enactus society or Enactus chapter and then they create projects that are sustainable and impactful. So they want people that, uh, sorry, they, they want to work on projects that are impacting and they don't focus on how much money you're making they're focusing on how many people you're benefiting mm. and then also it has to be sustainable so it actually has to be like a business it can't be just charity um, mm. and then they also work with uh, with all the global part like companies in the world um, i'll actually go into their website and show you how awesome they are so what enactus stands for the beginning part n is entrepreneurial and then act is for action and then us is for, yeah, for like all of us, I believe. Um, so let me just go onto their website. Enactus. Enactus. Oh, Enactus. So do they mainly uh, work with creative things or is just a general? That's a very, um, that's, that's a creative name, they're going to lie. They do everything. Um, and then also the way they work is they have um, a competition where they get all the university teams to compete against each other at a regional level and then a, a national level and then an international level. Well, oh, so every uni in every uni pretty much. 
So oh, we wow. are part of the Anakitis uh, Middlesex. We're because we're a new team. We set up this year. We're part of the rookie competition. Mm. So I think every year they have four rookie teams. So we're we're um, in a separate branch of the competition. So our competition is in March, and we're gonna we're gonna go in and uh, you know we have a better chance competing against four people than competing against all the other universities in the UK. Oh wow. Um, and then we've also got a couple of projects we've been working on. So the first one is um, around mental health and well-being. And then the second project is on um, on teaching English. Um, and also we've had a couple of other projects that we wanted to work on, but they, uh, they uh, weren't sustainable. They weren't feasible. Um, we wanted to look into like creating, you know, those machines where you get the water from. Oh, yeah. But charge people for it. So we want to see how uh, how for, like sustainable, um, but you see like so these are people that pay a million dollars and above. So we've got companies like Ford, KPMG, and Unilever. Mm. We've got Citigroup. We've got all of these companies. So these are their sponsors. So uh, it's definitely a good opportunity for for students to get involved, um, and also I'm pretty sure they work in Sudan as well, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Yeah, and you know, for the students at Middlesex, it's uh, even a better opportunity than usual because, as Ashraf said, you're only competing against four other universities rather than all of them. So you should definitely look into it. Definitely get involved, guys. Yeah. Um, all right, I think on that note, we're going to put another song on. Um, and let me play. Fragile State of Mind by the 
guys then you're back on mdx fm uh the mdx entrepreneur show live on on mdx fm every wednesday five till seven with ash khalifa and adila montijano my beautiful <laughs> cousin and today we uh, are joined by mr ahmed who is the uh, ma- the media manager sorry the marketing manager of the student media group welcome hello <laughs> <laughs> so um just in case you guys just joined us um what we were talking about um so this show today is dedicated to fatma ahmed ibrahim who was a pioneer an activist um a political activist so she pushed and campaign to um to get women more equality get women uh, better wages allow women opportunities to get into technical schools she set up the sudanese women's union she also was uh, uh she also had uh, published several magazines um when when she was younger she used to use a uh, an assumed name but as she was older after she set up the women's union she um, also set up a, a monthly magazine um she also was a member of the Sudanese Communist Party and um was the first woman elected into into parliament into parliament um in Africa um so she was a very great lady um she very was also powerful, very influential very much so and mm. she also um was Ecclesiastic. instrumental in um in overthrowing a multiple um regimes from the Umeri regime but also um she was definitely influential in, in the the recent revolution as well that overthrew uh, Omar al-Bashir as well um so yeah so this is um this week's uh, show is dedicated to her um and I'm very honored and very excited to have her actually as the the first uh, the first uh Sudanpreneur um and also um we talked briefly about um about the student media and how they rebranded uh, they decided to change the Pow FM and make it um MDX FM or MD, yeah MD, MDX um MDX FM yeah. MDX FM exactly um and yeah but there was another interesting topic um that I think we should discuss um so and it very much affects our university here because of the partnerships and the links that we have with them um so the Saracens rugby club uh one of the most famous and biggest uh you know rugby teams rugby clubs in the U- in in the UK in the world um so over the last 5 years they've had uh, tremendous success they've won the league uh four times and they also won the 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 champions league or the european cup uh, three times and they actually are the defending champions they, for both trophies so they won both of them last year um and then basically the way that rugby operates they have a strict salary cap which every single team has to you know has to abide by and um they after an investigation they were found to have been over the salary cap and they were given a 50 a 5 million pound sterling a 5 wow. million pound fine that's a lot, a lot money. of money <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot yeah <laughs> they also got given a 12 point deduction as well Mm. Um so this I think happened about like the end of November around about November time. Um unfortunately the reaction from the from the crowd uh from the team and the the club wasn't very remorseful, wasn't very serious uh mm. and all the other teams weren't very happy as well. So they all got together and they sort of pushed the the rugby regulatory body to increase the fine or increase the punishment. More so, than the 5 um, and 12. Yeah, so so I think th- and then they stayed firm at the five million pound, but they mm. gave them an additional fifty point deduction. Fifty. Yes, to make sure they wow. got relegated this year. Wow. Okay. So no chances at all. <laughs> no <laughs> chance for them to avoid relegation. Mm. Um. So definitely next year, Saracens Rugby Club is going to be playing in the championship. Mm. No um, mercy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it sucks right now, but I think it's only fair. Uh, yes, um. but how it affects yeah, Middlesex fun. um so number one Saracens they actually play in Hendon in Barnet Copthall um which is actually now named as the Allianz Allianz Park Allianz Arena and um basically our sports 
like sports physiotherapy and a lot of our teams actually work with the, within the Allianz like park. Um, so it's going to definitely have an impact on us, especially as um, Allianz, the company, has decided that at the end of the season they're gonna they're gonna stop their association with the club. So they're gonna have to find a new mm. naming rights partner for the stadium, and that's probably gonna lead to a loss of uh, a large loss of funds, I think, as well. Um, but I don't know. I'm biased because they're my they're like my rugby team, sort of. Um, but at the same time, like, I don't know how to feel because <laughs> they're like my local team, but they also have links with Middlesex. And then it's funny because my old university, I went to Surrey. So with the Surrey Sports Park, uh, we have Harlequins football, the rugby team. They, they train there. So I'm also kind of like a fan of Harlequins, but I'm, I'm here in Middlesex now. So, you know, Saracens and also they are, they are the best team. They are winning. <laughs> But the big impact is they have like nine players, I think, that like represented England at the last Rugby World Cup. So they also have the England rugby captain, Owen Farrell. They have uh, Mario Itojo. They have uh, the Vinopola brothers. You know, they have like a lot of players that play for England. So um, at the moment, only one player has gone out on record and said that he's going to stay with them. But everyone else is, uh, you know, keeping silent on this situation. But, I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't know, I don't really watch rugby so I don't know too much about it. In this. terms of like the impact it will have on our university. Um it does help the uni I could that's pretty much what I can say. Okay. <laughs> it's quite Sorry, unfortunate. I don't know, but um, I don't have better words to say. You know, I think if you really love something and you really have a passion for it, you'll find a way to do it and I think especially in sports and arts and stuff, so I think the team will be able to find a way whether they work with them or not. But oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's quite unfortunate. Pursue your goals. Yeah. 100%. Exactly. Yeah, pursue your goals. And also today, the, uh, I could say. the rugby team, the, the Middlesex rugby team, has managed to win. So like that's also a very good note. Um, Congrats to all the shout players. Shout out to the players <laughs> and uh, George, the captain, and mm. uh, the rest of the squad. And also, um, yeah, I just want to talk about um, in my first year, I remember the rugby team managed to go through the whole season unbeaten. And they won the league and the cup double, so uh, there was actually a big uh, rivalry with the with the girls' team because they were also going through an unbeaten mm. season. But I think it, they lost in the cup, unfortunately. But I think they also won the league unbeaten as well. Wow. Okay. So hopefully this year's team can also manage to. Yeah, it's always winning. They will continue. Winning winning as well. It's become a tradition now. Exactly. You know they have to. <laughs> <the legacy laughs> always and winning and losing <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> okay. Um, we're gonna. Take another break. Play another uh, song. Play another song. <laughs> and uh, we shall see you hopefully very soon. Okay, let's see what song are we going to play. I'll play this song. It's called Back to You. So that is... Because uh, we'll get back to you. That's exactly right. We didn't. Yeah, good thing for the break. Back to you, back to that's, you. That's great.
guys and you're back on mdx entrepreneur show on mdx fm you are back lucky you <laughs> and um so we unfortunately oh you know i always do this guys i always look at the wrong clock because it's funny the radio station uh, computer has the time now at 6 55 and it's actually 7 10 it's like 10 minutes so it's slow in it so i'm always losing track we've got like another a couple of minutes with you guys today so um, we're gonna wrap this up um, but we definitely do our show every Wednesday so make sure you guys tune in uh, Wednesday from 5 till 7 mm. and uh, we love you and we will leave you mm. I'm gonna play back that uh, jingle just to remind you guys who we are and hopefully uh why wait to start your business after uni when the best time is now Join the Entrepreneur Society for the opportunity to learn from industry experts about generating ideas, funding, and becoming an entrepreneur. With networking events, guest speakers, and workshops, build your entrepreneurial mind with us. For upcoming events, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at MDX Entrepreneurs. All right, guys, listen, uh, you're with Ashraf Khalifa, and we will see you next week. Yeah, make sure to tune in next week. Maybe we'll even have some live music, some more very interesting guests, and yeah, interesting context. Exciting. So we'll thank you for you. listening. And yeah. we have to thank our guest speaker, Mr. Ahmed, today for coming and, uh, and agreeing to take part in this interview with us. Yeah. With pleasure. Okay, goodbye, everyone. Peace. Peace out.